Okay, so now that you have a little bit of background information on what reinforcement is, let's talk about a few more components of reinforcement. So we're going to run off of the assumption that as a parent, you know the things that your kids really like and that they will be willing to work for. And we've already talked about the idea that this needs to not be free access stuff. Whatever they like, you need to be in control of at this point. Um, when you are getting your kiddos to pick what they want to work for, if you are finding that they're having a lot of behaviors and a lot of refusals around doing what you're asking them to do, there is the potential that what you've picked as a reinforcer is not motivating enough to get them to do the work. So when we think about reinforcement, we have to talk about our rate. So think about when you get paid. There's a schedule of when you get paid. And then think about um, what type of task to what kind of payout you're going to get. So um, in a lot of different jobs, depending on what you're doing, let's, let's talk about like if you were somebody um, cutting lawns, right? Um, and if you were cutting a really small lawn and you used your little push mower and it was, you know, a quick job, you might get paid 50 bucks. Now, if you go to somebody's house and they've got an acre of land, then you are going to have to have a rotting lawn mower. It's going to take you a lot more time, a lot more effort. So you're probably going to charge a lot more. Our reinforcement is going to work the same way. So if you're asking your kiddo to do something really hard, then you want to be using your bigger reinforcers and you're going to want to be giving that a lot faster. Um, and if you are, if you're going to sit down for five minutes of work, then you might want to do something like you earned hugs and tickles. So the amount of work and the difficulty of the work is something that you want to take into consideration when you're picking your reinforcer. So let's not give your kiddo um, 30 minutes on the Kindle for doing five minutes of work. Now, the caveat to this is, if you have never really implemented a schedule like this before, and if you have never really done um, the programs that you're going to work on with your kiddo, if this is a totally new dynamic for you and your child to be giving them a schedule, to be taking them off of a lot of free time and having them do the things you want them to do, then you may need to really amp up your rate of reinforcement and how powerful a reinforcer you're using. So some of this is going to be specific to you and your relationship with your child and how this goes. Um, so you can directly reach out to me as you start to implement this if you're finding that you're hitting a wall after you've set all this up. Um, but if you have a fairly reasonable history with your child of having them do a lot of um, parent chosen activities, then you're going to want to sort of mimic the schedule that we use right now for reinforcement. So one of the tools that I gave you is something we call a token board, and I don't have one to hold up for you, but it's the little square that I gave you that says I am working for, and then it has five Velcro spots and five things to put on there. This is essentially their schedule of pay. When am I going to get the payout for doing what you've asked me to do? So as soon as you sit down to work with your kiddo, it could be art time, it could be direct instruction trying to do some of our lessons, um, Whatever you do, a board game, I didn't mention that in the schedule, I should have. Playing games and playing are also important. Um, so you sit down and you say, what are you earning? They pick it. If you don't have a picture to go on your token board, which I would imagine most of you do not, you can put the item by the token board so that they can reference it if they need it. Um, and then you're going to use the tokens and deliver them as they're doing a good job doing what you're asking. When all five tokens are on the token board, that's when they get to earn. So this is where you're kind of showing them the rate at which they're going to receive reinforcement. So if you're going to sit down and work for 20 minutes with your kiddo, and you've got five tokens for them to earn, um, you can think about every five correct answers 
Am I going to be giving them a token every four minutes that they're sitting at the table doing a good job? Um, you, you want to think about how you're going to be delivering these tokens. Do you want your token to be every one worksheet they do? Do you want the token to be um, for a time period? Every five minutes they're at the table, every four minutes they're at the table. Um, there's a lot of technical things that go on with rates of reinforcement, things that I think are not worth necessarily delving into right now. Um, there's fixed rates and varied rates. There's these ratios. But I think um, what you need to know is that that token can equal whatever you need it to equal. If your child is really struggling with working with you in this capacity, then every single time they do a desired behavior, give them a token, let them get their five tokens, let them have two minutes of earn time, come back, do it again, and then start trying to stretch out now it's every two times you do something right, here's a token. Now every three times, every four times. Um, the other thing about a token system is that in general, we try to have the token board either be four positive um, behaviors. So I like how you're sitting in your chair, I like how you have a calm body, I like how you have listening ears, I like how you're keeping your hands to yourself or for the accuracy of the skills that we're targeting. You're right, that is the correct answer. Here's a token. And we try not to combine the two of them. But I think at home for now, given that you all probably have great connections with your kiddos, you know um, the praise and the tickles and the physical contact, the social component that they like, really use that for all of the desired um, behaviors of attending and listening and complying. <gasps> I love how you're sitting. Look at those looking eyes. You're ready to listen to me. I like how your hands are down. I'm going to give you some tickles. I'm going to give you a hug. You know, really use um, that connection to praise those types of behaviors. And then for actually getting things correct, um, try giving them the tokens for that. Now, if you get into a situation where behavior is so over the top that you really can't even work on a skill, you're really just working on the skill of, right now, I am your instructor and you need to be compliant, then just give tokens for those desired behaviors. Sitting, calm body, listening, hands down, quiet mouth, um, all the things that you want to see. Looking eyes, listening body, all of, of those pieces. Um, so some of this will depend on how your child reacts to you trying this as well. Um, but those are the pieces. The other thing that you'll have to think about is if two scenarios. One, if they get so upset about something that they no longer care about what they're earning, um, that can be a tough situation. It's, it's kind of rare if you have a reinforcer that's really highly desired, um, then usually you'll see a child push through to be able to earn their tokens. But sometimes a kiddo will get too anxious or too wrapped up in a power struggle, and that power struggle or that anxiety is making it so that whatever they're trying to earn isn't even worth it to them in that moment anymore. When you're having behavior issues, you're going to remind them, what are you earning? How many more tokens do you need? Um, and if they have some sort of full-blown meltdown, you're really just going to kind of wait. After you've reminded them, if you don't see a change in their behavior, um, you don't need to do a lot of talking to a kiddo when they're having a meltdown. You don't need to do a lot of reminding them of anything. Once you've asked them to sit, reminded them of what they're earning, reminded them of their calm body, um, you kind of just sit back and, and wait. You can point to the chair. Um, if you have pictures, you can hold them up. But what you don't want to do is a lot of bargaining. And you don't want to really have much of a dialogue or much of a reaction at all since you really don't know the cause of it. So you're really just kind of calmly and neutrally waiting for them to get to a point where they return to their seat. Um, and at that point, if they get back in their seat and they start earning, 
great, you just keep moving until they've earned their tokens and you're ready to rock. Um, but keep in the back of your mind that if you are consistently not seeing them do what you're asking, you may not have something that they really want to earn. Um, and this is a tricky situation. You can revisit it by saying, hey, what do you want to earn? And see if they want to change their mind. You can bring in a second thing on your own that they, you know they like. So let's say they're earning um, technology, right? But you're not seeing them comply with what you're asking to earn this technology. Maybe they've had it a lot all day and they're really not into it. But you know you've got a bag of cookies that they love that they haven't seen in a long time. Pull out the bag of cookies with it if you need to um, and add that to what they're earning. Or even give them one a few times for doing what you're asking just to get them on track again. Um, in the end, what you want to do is change what they're earning if it doesn't seem effective in getting them to do what you're asking. We covered a lot of information in this one. Um, hopefully it made sense and if you have questions once you get started, then definitely reach out because this is all going to kind of depend on how it goes for you and your kiddo. Um, yeah. <laughs>